Everyone, this three questions with Dr. Kimberly Miles. There we go. Finally get Dr. Miles on the podcast. So I actually had Dr. Miles, uh, we were supposed to be on the podcast and, you know, she is currently a principal, so super busy. And then I moved countries and then I said, I'm going to reach out when we get to Florida and now here we are. So I'm so excited to finally have you on the podcast. Thanks so much for the invite. Appreciate it. Yeah. And so Dr. Miles has actually been in education. We started the same year in 1999, has been a principal for 12 years, is in the beautiful state of Oregon. I actually, um, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is going to make me look good or bad. I actually got a new pair of Oregon uh, Ducks running shoes today. So maybe a little shout out to, are you an Oregon fan or is it like, or I know there's probably Oregon, Oregon State. Which one? My son went to that university. So yeah, we're Duck fans. There you go. Awesome. And so uh, Dr. Miles been in education um, for 20 plus years. So I know we had some great conversation before we even got on here. I know you have a ton of different experiences in, in different spaces. But when you look back at the teachers that you've had in your life, whether it's someone you worked with, someone who taught you, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? So I can think of two uh, teachers who uh, truly inspired me, and they were my first teaching partners. The first one was Jan Muiman and Emily Bath, and we were a threesome. We taught third grade, and the way that they uh, inspired me to uh, work together collaboratively really has been a trajectory of what I do as an educator all through all these years. And so we just figured it out together. And um, they also in, uh, gave me excitement about teaching early literacy, making connections with kids. And just they had this great passion for teaching that um, as me as an early educator, this was my second career really inspired me to, to do and be better. And, and I love that. I was actually just thinking about, uh, you know, um, and we're going to give a, a little uh, shout out to them. I don't know if they're listening to this podcast right now. So a little shout out to them. Uh, I was actually just talking to a friend of mine um, who I first taught with in my first year of teaching. And she actually just told me that um, one of the teachers I worked with at the time, and she was near retirement when I was there, uh, had just passed away. And she, mm -hmm. she was such a lovely lady, just uh, amazing. And it was really, I, I, I thought a lot about her Um when I, when I found out the news, because I, I was pretty comfortable with technology at that point in my career. And uh, she was not. And I remember, I'll never forget this. It was like one of my favorite stories ever. Uh, you know, like, she, I don't I haven't used one in forever. She had a, like a mouse, right? Like a mouse, a computer. And I was trying to teach her something. And she like, she pulled the mouse off of the table and squeezed it. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 that's not how it works, right? And, and it was amazing because she she actually was such an amazing teacher and she she like had so much experience she was so kind she was so generous and helped me with so much but she also defaulted to me in my first year on the stuff that i was good at and she made me feel really special about that and i think a lot of times you hear in education like oh if you haven't taught 10 years like you know don't and it's like really like I, we got to see like everyone brings gifts no matter where they're in their career. And I just, um, I remember that. And I think that, I think that's when we talk about collaboration, I think there's a real power in helping find the gifts of the people that you work with and bringing them out, not thinking like, I never thought, you know, I, I, like as much as I laugh about that, this teacher is like a million times better than me, but she always made me feel special and made me feel like I was valued, you know, in like my first, not even a year, but like months of teaching. And I thought that was really special. So I appreciate you mentioning teacher colleagues because I think a lot of times um, they don't get the credit that they deserve the people that we work with. So I, I love that. Yeah, and, and they so, took the time to just be with me. It's like, let's yeah. figure this out together. I mean, I was new, I didn't know. And so they gave me their gift of time, which looking back, it's like, oh my goodness, that was so generous, right? Yeah. And those, and those moments mean everything, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that very much. And so you've been a, you've been a principal for you know uh, twelve years, and uh, I know that you've had a lot of different experiences. We talked about you know you have a, a real big focus on shared leadership framework. Talk about Ill, early literacy, and we're going to talk more about that in the next podcast. Um, but when you think about the administrators that you've worked with, um, maybe a principal, maybe a superintendent, maybe someone who is you know in your school experience, who's a leader that really inspired you, and why? 
Mm, there's so many to choose from, right? Um, well, that's good because I, I don't know if everyone listening has that same experience. So sometimes it's like I've had, I've had, I can't pick one. So I'm glad you've had many. That's great. I think the administrator that I look up to the most was the one that gave me my opportunity to teach. And um, she, uh, I was older than most of the candidates and um, she saw something in me that um, gave her inspiration that this was a really good fit for me. And uh, as the years progressed, she not only became um, my, super, she was my supervisor, but she then became um, a colleague, a principal colleague and a collegial mentor. And we just had this relationship where I could go to her with questions or concerns and she would give me guidance and directions. And more importantly, she'd ask really strategic questions so that I didn't always come back with an answer, but I had some reflections uh, that I could take away and, and think things through differently. And so just having that first belief in me and then mentoring me into being where I'm at today, I really have to attribute um, her um, on my journey. And, and you know, one of the reasons I love doing this podcast is it really reminds me of like amazing people I worked with. And I'm like, I have this, I have this question for you when mm -hmm. you're thinking about this, when I, um, Kelly Wilkins is someone I talk about all the time and she was a principal and within, she, you know, uh, basically within one year of being ready to, to quit, I, I went on her staff and then I became assistant principal and then a principal. And I, the reason I think about this and I know this is going to sound ridiculous. Um, so I was a principal at the same time she was a principal, but she was almost like the kid that sees their teacher when they're growing up, but still can't <laughs> call their teacher by their first name. Like that's how I acted toward her. Cause like I held her in such high regard that mm -hmm. even though, you know, we were doing the same position, she was like, you know, totally different. Did you ever feel that? Did you ever feel like, you know, that, that kid in the, the grocery oh, yeah. store that sees your teacher when you're growing up, but you still can't call him by their first name. Get a little taller and, you know, it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah. It's like, what I am I doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, you made me think of that. Cause I was like, yeah, I just, even though we're doing the same, I just held her in such high regard. I like, you know, I was like, no, no, no. Like you'll always, you'll always be my, you know, my principal, like save my career. Right. No matter if we're doing the same job. So I, I love that you highlighted that. And again, and so, she didn't give me answers. She made yeah. me think. And I, I still, you know, contribute that, that on my path. Well, that's what, and that's what great teachers do too, right? You know, they, they empower kids to be able to figure out their own pathway forward. So I, I, I love that. And so you actually said your career, this is a second career for you. Mm -hmm. So you obviously brought some experience, some knowledge from, you know, different experiences that you had before you went into teaching. But when you look back at that first year of teaching, even though you had some experience in other places, I'm sure there's advice you'd give to yourself. So if you could go back and talk to, you know, Dr. Kimberly Miles in that first year, what advice would you give to yourself? So I'm going to tell a little story real quick. Good. I remember my first year and um, I never cry. I never cry. Just that's not my thing. But I remember sitting at the back table with tears running down me and it was Friday and I had to plan for next week. And I just like, I was empty. I was totally empty and I didn't have anything to give. It was just a hard and the advice that I wish I would have given myself is what I say to myself all the time now is go slow to go fast. So take some time for you, you know, breathe and it will come. And I, that was a hard, hard lesson for me to learn because I'm very much, let's get to this, let's get it done. But I have learned to go slow to go fast and it has been a game changer in my career. I love I, that. I love that. And you, you know, we're, do it, but I try. Right. And we were talking about that before. One of the things, and I know this is going to maybe sound crazy as a strategy, but you know, we had this, um, you know, I have, I send you a calendar appointment for, you know, this podcast. So that time is blocked off and, you know, I have meetings at certain times. I have, you know, connections, I have conferences I go to, but I actually block off in my calendar, um, certain things with my family, right? Like, and they're, they're like, their appointments that I make, that that time is untouchable. You can, that is, that is my time with my family. Mm -hmm. Um, like I never do the podcast if I'm home on Wednesdays, because that's my time. I take my daughter to dance and that's it. You, that is, that is untouchable time. And I think that's something we have to get better with as educators is that how accountable we are to our schedule, to our colleagues, to our students, you have to block off that time the same way you do not only for your, your family, 
um, the people closest to you, but for yourself, right? I also have untouchable time for when I work out in the morning. That, that is that is sacred time to me. Um, and so that that's that what's that's what fuels my day. So I, I, I think that's such great advice. And so um, if you want to connect with Dr. Miles, you can see her uh, social media down below in the description. Dr. Miles, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Uh, yeah. It's been great to finally connect with you. And everyone, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I look forward to talking to Dr. Miles more and follow up on another podcast.